Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Meerkat Musings. Welcome back to the latest in my F1 Manager 24 series, which is, of course, going on over at meerkatmusings.co.uk. But here is my video accompaniment, shall we say, to, uh, to my written series. And we are now nine races in, so I felt like this was a reasonable time to to carry on so to speak where do we stand well we have had some tremendous highs for meerkat racing uh well i say tremendous relatively speaking we've had some tremendous highs uh we've also had some unfortunate lows as well uh, in some cases tied up to the same race weekend more on that in a moment in terms of results over the course of the season so far, it's quite interesting because uh, whereas in the first nine races of uh, 2024 for real, uh, Verstappen was, was kind of streaking away from pretty much everyone else by this point, largely down to some inconsistency within his rivals. On this occasion, he's not actually, within the game, shall we say, he's not actually dominating proceedings in quite the same way. He has won, Verstappen has won six of the nine races so far this season, and Charles Leclerc has won the other three, including victory at Monaco, which of course he won at for real. So Leclerc is keeping Verstappen kind of honest, and Ferrari are keeping Red Bull kind of honest. Carlos Sainz actually won both sprint races so far this season as well. So it's not all going Verstappen and Red Bull's way, not by any means. However, Verstappen does have a 37-point lead in the, in the standings after nine rounds. And it's fair to say that's not, you know, it's not insurmountable, but it's not insignificant either. He has a margin of more than a race win. Uh, so he's, he's currently looking... I would say, in, in, a, in a strong place. This has been underscored by a couple of races where he started a bit further down the pack for one reason or another, and he has still gone on to win the race. Case in point, actually, happens to be the most recent race in, um, in Canada, where he uh, wound up being kind of squeezed down the standings somewhat at the start. And, and Canada really was possibly from from a qualifying perspective one of the most fascinating races certainly the best qualifying for meerkat racing by a considerable margin more on that in a moment and just to swing back a moment to the monaco grand prix uh, the previous round that has been probably undoubtedly the best moment for meerkat racing so far I say that because that is the venue where uh, Frenchman Theo Porcher scored Meerkat Racing's first ever F1 point. He managed to finish 10th, uh, p- aided partly by, by some good tyre strategy and some good tyre management on his part, he must be said, with the, a risk being taken with a late run on the soft tyre that kind of, or say late one, it was actually a somewhat long run on the soft tyre at the end, but he was able to make it work and he was able to claim an invaluable point. Other things did fall into place for him, to be fair. George Russell had a moment where he ran wide and broke his front wing. That, of course, slowed him down and brought him out of contention for points. So that was lucky. But you have to also put yourself in the position to take advantage of things like that. And, and, and Theo Poche did. He did exactly that. So first points ever for Meerkat Racing. But the Canadian Grand Prix yielded an opportunity for further points for this new team. It actually yielded a few things in, in qualifying. Qualifying took place across some very variable conditions in terms of the weather. It was It was damp and at some point it was very damp and therefore of course judging when to go out judging the conditions 
and taking advantage of those conditions wasn't necessarily always the easiest thing to do, but it was also crucial to where everyone would end up on the grid. And remarkably, in the course of qualifying, first of all, both Meerkat cars got into Q3, which was absolutely in- incredible for them. Um, you know, a, a brilliant result, and, and uh, they would have been happy to start. I think, you know, ninth and tenth on the grid, assuming, assuming that, you know, qualifying and the conditions for Q3 didn't really change too much, they would have been happy with that, without a doubt. However, conditions continued to change. Q3 started out being very, very damp, and in those first runs, a few people, you know, set some, some times in, in somewhat tentative fashion, and that was a case of wondering what would the track do? Would it, would it dry out? Would it stay damp? It did begin to dry out, but it didn't necessarily go dry. However, it dried out enough that those who decided to go out for a second time were able to pump in much better laps. This led to um, Vera Borchair and Liam Lawson qualifying third and fourth on the grid for the Canadian Grand Prix, which was unreal. Another little twist as well, uh, the McLaren of Oscar Piastri qualified on pole, his first ever pole position in Formula 1, in the game, of course. And um, and Charles Leclerc would line up in second place, with Max Verstappen bumped down to fifth. So, in principle, a great opportunity for Leclerc to make up some ground in, in the title race. But the race wouldn't pan out for for him, and it wouldn't pan out for Piastri, and it certainly wouldn't pan out for Meerkat Racing. At the start of the race, predictably, in, in many respects, a number of guys got beyond the two Meerkat guys. We weren't really in a fight for, for the front positions, and we knew that. There was no point in burning up our tyres, trying to hold up much faster cars that would breeze past us sooner or later anyway. But... Both the drivers were kind of scrapping around, like you know, the eighth, ninth, tenth places, and even potentially kind of loitering uh, a little bit higher up in, in, in some respects. You know, seventh perhaps wasn't wasn't entirely out of the question, depending on circumstances. The cars looked quick around Canada. I, I don't know what it was about the track uh, and the conditions, but somehow both drivers were really kind of niggling it around here until um, yeah, I think it was lap 20 when things went horribly horrifically awfully wrong by lap 20 by the way it's worth noting that uh, Max Verstappen had actually got into the lead of the race so he had made up his deficit from qualifying fifth to get in front uh, and he would be kind of peerless once again at the front of the grid but for me cat racing the, the, the prospect of a brilliant double points finish building upon Monaco, it, it fell apart. Reason being, or in the first instance at least, Pocher coming up to Canada's mighty hairpin uh, was behind the racing ball of Daniel Ricciardo when he locked his brakes and slammed into the, the Australian driver. This put both cars out of the race and triggered a, a safety car which then negated any margin of comfort that Liam Lawson had over the, the Mercedes behind him of George Russell. However, owing to some, some intelligent use of the, the energy recovery system, Lawson was just about keeping Russell at bay for several laps once the safety car came in, until Russell then went into the back of Lawson. And this had the consequence of damaging Lawson's rear wing. A rear wing is not something you can change in a race. A front wing you can, it costs you time of course, but you can change it. A, a rear wing you can't change, it's just not possible. So he limped on for a few more laps before I took the decision to retire the car. It, it, by this point, you know, we'd lost several places, we weren't going to make it back up into the points, and, and to be honest, we were just going to fall further and further back with a damaged car. So it, it was a touch gutting to be honest to kind of lose out like that but that's Formula 1 for you that's how it goes in real life we've seen this we saw this in 2018 
uh, I think it was with the Has team in Australia when they were running really, really well and they had two pit stop issues that put both their cars out of the race. F1 can be unforgiving. It can be brutal like that. And unfortunately for me, it was in Canada in, in round nine. Meanwhile, as mentioned before, it was a great race from the perspective of Max Verstappen. Not only did he win the race, but his teammate Sergio Perez had an absolute stormer to get into second place behind him. He made up 11 places to claim second place. While Lando Norris jumped up into third, uh, pole sitter Piastri slipped down to sixth in the end, a disappointing race for him, and Leclerc ended up in fourth, so of course didn't even make the podium. Uh, so, so disappointment for those on the front row of the grid as well. And it brings us, of course, as I say, to the standings. Max Verstappen on 207 points. Uh, Charles Leclerc on 170, 37 points back. And you know, it, it's not an insurmountable gap at this point, far from it. But it is more than a race win. So Verstappen has a margin of error now. He can afford to fail to finish a race. And he can you know, drop those points to, to, to Leclerc and still lead the title race. He doesn't obviously want to do that by any means, but he has that opportunity should he need it. The other consequence of a 1-2 finish for Red Bull is that they jumped ahead of Ferrari in the constructor standings. They now have 312 points to Ferrari's 308 points. So they've, they've managed to leapfrog Ferrari uh, as a result of, A, of course, Verstappen winning all the time, but B... I think it's fair to say that we've seen some more consistent performances of late from Sergio Perez. He's been uh, finishing second a few times of late, and those podium finishes are bolstering uh, both Verstappen's title chances, because, of course, Perez is now coming in as a buffer, but they are also a massive boon in the Constructors' Championship. Elsewhere... There's not really much change, really, to be fair. Um, the top eight teams, you've got Ferrari um, in second place behind Red Bull, McLaren a third, comfortably third, it might be said, uh, or must be said, Aston Martin fourth, Racing Bull fifth, Mercedes down in sixth and having a miserable season. Um, the Haz team are in seventh, and then Meerkat Racing are in eighth. There are still a number of teams yet to score a point. Uh, Sauber, Alpine and Williams all currently yet to get a single point so far in the season. And Alpine in particular are looking slower and slower. It's, it's almost scary how slow they are at this point. Williams is not much better, unfortunately, for them. Uh, it's starting to look like Meerkat Racing could threaten the Haz team in terms of raw pace. Um, that That's a possibility, certainly. But the, the, the big shock, really has to be Mercedes. They are looking very, very poor. I mean, Hamilton um, managed to get eighth place in in Canada, and that has seen him um, kind of you know, increase his points by a third, which is crazy. You know, he only has 12 points to show uh, for, for his efforts after, after nine races, and George Russell you know, has, has even fewer points at this point of the season. Uh, so it, it, it's absolutely crazy. You know, they, they are really struggling and I don't know quite as to, as to why that is, but they just can't seem to, to lock things in, as it were, with the, the 2024 car. There are regulation changes. The thing about this game is it's quite realistic in some respects. There are rule changes coming in for 2025, some subtle changes that could change things for everyone, of course. Crucially, I believe that the game will actually simulate some of the real upcoming transfers. So we'll see Hamilton move along to um, to Ferrari in 2025. As to who else goes where, well, that's not been decided yet. But on the basis of things, within the game at least, you can't imagine that Verstappen would leave Red Bull. But we are only nine races in. Long way to go. Long way to go. Still more than half the season ahead of us. So who knows how things will evolve 
as we move through the season. Will it be like real life? Will we see Mercedes and McLaren bolster their car to the point where it's as quick, if not quicker, than the Red Bulls? Or will Verstappen and Red Bull continue to stretch their advantage and just look like they're on cruise control all the way to victory? We will find out.